Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I'm doing a fairly chilled out video today um, on the theme of <laughs> all my other videos lately. Um, basically, as you know, if you're watching my videos um, of late, stuff is fairly up and down at the minute. Um, I've had a few bad days um, lately and this evening is probably one of my better evenings. So what I wanted to do is just catch the time to film um, when I'm in a state to be able to do that um, for you so that you have something this weekend. So I'm actually filming this at like 10 o'clock on a Thursday night because I'm feeling a little bit brighter and I thought I would just get some filming done <laughs> um, so that I don't kind of beat myself up about that either. So what I'm going to do today is show you some more TBR books. So I think this is TBR Pile Part 3 now, um, but basically it's just the books that I'm going to read sort of within the next couple months. There's never any real sort of, you know, faff if I don't do them. It's just a case of trying to give myself some targets and trying to um, give it a bit of structure as well. Um, I was thinking about it earlier and I think I quite like that the sort of library feel when you've got loads of books out in a pile to read that's like, oh, I've got to read these by this time where I have to return them. I think that's what I like about TBR polls. So I'll show you the ones that I'm reading first um, at the moment and then I'll go into the ones that I'm going to try and get to you within the next sort of month or so. So the first one that I'm currently reading is um, Death at Intervals by Jose Saramago and I'm reading this one as much as I possibly can. Um, I am 68 pages in now. I read Blindness and Seeing by him last year and loved him, I did an author spotlight on him, I liked him so much um, and I just really love his work in general. I've been reading this one for sort of a half hour or so tonight and um, it, it does make me laugh and um, it makes me smile and that's quite hard at the minute and um, yeah so like serious props like um, he's really funny, he's really witty and he has really good turns of phrase so I'm loving this one so far and I'm definitely going to keep on reading Saramago. I know he's got The Cave and The Double, the two I'm aware of, but if there are any more let me know that have been translated because yeah he's just a bit, of a, a bit of a special one, I think he's a really good author. And the next one I'm currently reading is one I haven't made any progress on since I last spoke to you about it. I'm not getting stressed about it. I mentioned that I'm not trying to stress myself out by reading stuff I don't really want to read at the minute or by stuff that's like I'm finding hard. So that's Compass by Matthew Senard and um, I'm, I liked it, I'm, I'm liking it, but it's just far too complicated for me at the minute and um, I can't I can't get at it. Um, and I'm just finding that quite frustrating. So I'm probably going to leave this one lie, but uh, I just want to include it just in case um, I do start feeling better soon enough that I can pick this one up in the next couple of months. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not that it's a bad book, it's not, it's just that it's a bit denser and that's not where I am at the minute. And then the next one that I'm currently reading, the last one I'm currently reading, is um, Our Revolution by Bernie Sanders. Non-fiction, basically the story of Sanders's campaign trail. Um, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more about his politics and a bit more of a like looking at the way forward. It's very much um, kind of him, <laughs> um, which I kind of guess it, it would be, but um, I don't know, it's more person focused than politics focused, though obviously you get an idea about what he believes. But um, this is very accessible, so this has actually been really helpful because I like to read non fiction, but sometimes um, it can be a bit more complicated and I didn't want to feel really discouraged, so I'm reading really little bits of this. Um, I'm only 200 and 120 pages in. Um, but so far, yeah, so far um, it, it's sort of interesting, but um, it's different to what I thought it was going to be. But yeah, I've got that one. And then on to the ones that I have picked up um, to read for the next couple of months. So the first one is one I knew I wanted to read and I've chosen myself. And the other four that I'm going to show you are ones that I pick like out of a hat from a pile I have that I want to try and read first. Um, so I'll show you the one I definitely want to read first. So the first one is a bit of a massive one and you're probably thinking why are you doing this if you're having a bit of a hard time but um, sometimes I think a good book, a good big book can give you quite a lot of room to think and to work your way through so I think this would be a nice one for like the summer but what it is is it's 4321 by Paul Oster, I still don't know. Um, it's massive, it's, it's kind of 860 odd pages long um, hardcover, big book. Um, I believe it's a story that deals with like alternate timelines and lots of different people's timelines all crossing over and kind of maybe like multiple lives. I don't know if it's quite like a reincar reincarnation, like a life after life thing, but um, yeah, definitely kind of same people, different times feel, I think. And yeah, I think it might just be a bit of escapism. I've got a week off in 
June, end of May, early June. Um, and I might do some watch see if you do very little vlogs at that time too, um, if I'm kind of feeling up to it. But I thought having one big book to work through in that week might be good for me and can might help level me out. Um, so yeah, 4321 is one that I definitely want to try and get to in the next um, couple months. And then we've got the four that I chose kind of randomly. Um, and the first one that I picked out of my hat um, was Deceit and Self-Deception by Robert Trivers. And this is one I've been really looking forward to, so I was really glad to see this one come up. Um, this is non-fiction and it's talking about all the ways in which we deceive not only ourselves, but the way that deception is used by lots of different parties. And I picked it up, or rather my boyfriend bought it for me, when... Um, I like flicked through and um, saw the chapter headings, they're just really like diverse, so things like, okay, the immune system is expensive, like I immediately want to know what, why. Um, manipulative metaphors in your life, like okay, what, why? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Just ask questions. Um, or like, um, the challenge of disaster, a land without people, a people without land, which I'm guessing is probably going to be an Israel-Palestine <laughs> thing. Um, can wars be won through bombing? Um, like the more social your discipline, the more retarded its development. Uh, yeah, it, it it just seems like it's going to be a really interesting thing. It's going to touch on lots of different topics and lots of different really tangible like examples when it goes through. And I think that's how I like to think about like philosophy and psychology is to have it kind of expressed in lots of different ways. So hopefully this one's going to be really interesting. It's it's quite a long one, um, and the font's quite little, but I do think. Is something I'm going to be really interested in. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to get to that one eventually. And the next one I picked up is one I'm a bit nervous for, but I think actually I'm probably going to quite enjoy it. Um, it's just because I've had it for a little while and I've been a bit nervous for it. But what it is, is it is Hitchcock and Bradbury Fist Fight in Heaven, which is a McSweeney's Magazine issue 45. And I picked this one up a long time ago. I think it was back in January because I read the first one, 46, I think was the first one I read and I loved it. And um, I wanted to get hold of another one. And this is all short stories, and um, the big big name authors like China Mel Melville, um, Roald Dahl, Ray Bradbury, Dave Eggers, um, like who else have we got? Probably everyone in here you should know, like John Cheever, John Steinbeck, um, Franz Kafka. <laughs> um, yeah, like they they're, they're just they're all big name authors, and they're all like short stories. Uh, and actually, I think probably. I will like them. Um, it's just that it's been a little bit of time since I got it and I don't know why but I was sort of feeling a little bit nervous about it. I think because it's so many big names I get sometimes I get worried when I think I'm supposed to love something and I don't think I will. Um, so yeah I think it's just my own nerves about it but I actually think this is probably going to be a really good fun one especially because they're short stories. Um, I might even end up taking it with me to work and then like each short story like doing that in like lunch breaks or something. Not sure, but yeah, it should be interesting anyhow. Um, and it's been like four months since I bought it, so yeah, I really should actually have a go and give it a shot. And the next one's another one that I was a little bit nervous for, but I'm quite glad it came up because it's been sitting there again it's been since December or January. And um, that one is The Heart is a Lowly Hunter by um, Carson McCullers. And I picked this one up when I was on my Steinbeck McCarthy binge. And I wanted a kind of different, like, Western kind of feeling um, story. Now, it's actually been a really long time since I read, like, my last of my Western type stuff. And um, that's really good because I think I felt a little bit over-egged by the time I actually got to round to sort of the time when I could have read this. And, like, I'd kind of had a bit too much of it. Um, but, yeah, it's been a bit of time now and I think it should be interesting. Now, I don't know very much about it. I know that Mercedes really likes it. And I know it's a really popular book, but I'm kind of going in fairly blind, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm a bit nervous, is it's, again, got that hype, and I don't really know anything about it. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what I think of it. Um, what are the fonts, like, weird? Such a silly thing, um, but I really don't like, I don't know what they're called, but, like, in books, when you have, you focus font, when you have lots of kicks on letters, can you see what I mean? Like, when you've got lots of, um, sort of fancy lettering, I really struggle with it. I really struggle to read it. I much prefer the kind of, like, that. <laughs> just giving you loads of examples of fonts. But you know what I mean? Like, I kind of prefer that, where it's just a bit more straightforward and easy. I don't really like, like, it sounds so stupid, but I tend to like books less that have 
kicks in them, which is ridiculous, but um, it's enough that it's put me off when I've got like a massive pile. I was going, oh, I need another one. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to see what I think of it. I think I really ought to jump in and actually go, and it's, you know, so many people love it. I'm sure there'll be something in there for me to get from it, um, and it's time, so yeah, that one next. And then the last one I have is one I've been dying to get to, um, and I think it has come at quite the right time actually, um, because I'm actually going to try and buddy read this for, with um, Amy from Shout Amy. Um, she got me this one for I think my birthday, and we were going to do it as like a buddy read. Um, and it is um, Flamingo Land and Other Stories um, by Ella Wakatama, I'm afraid. And this is a collection of sort of weird short stories <laughs> um, that sound kind of like, yeah, it says like dystopian futures, woodland fairy tales, a woman's solace in the world of online gaming, like quite diverse stories. Um, but it's a really short little collection and they all they all sound really interesting, like the good description really pulled me in and I don't think, I don't know if anyone's read it, so we'll see what I think. Um, but I think this is a good one because a lot of the other ones are actually quite long. Um, this would be a good one to break it up, and especially if I'm doing it as a buddy read, it'd be nice to be able to chat about what I'm reading a little bit. So those are all of the books that I have chosen for myself to read over sort of broadly May and June, um, but I'm not fussy. Um, I'm really not being harsh on it at all. If I don't read any of them, that's absolutely fine. Um, but they're the ones I thought to give myself a bit of structure to what I'm reading, a bit of a goal for them would be good. Um, so just to update you a little bit on TBRs in general before I go away. I basically have in my room at the minute three piles of books, one of which is new hauls from non-fiction, one's new hauls from a fiction and one is old hauls, uh, where old hauls are books that I have bought prior to May of this year. So what I'm trying to do is read the May ones first essentially, um, or as much as I can, and that's why my TBR books are my older books because I want to kind of keep clearing those off and then I've still got the new ones kind of sitting on top um, for when I get around to those. Um, but yeah, so that's my aim is to kind of work my way through those and then essentially go along the piles. Um, though I, as I say, I'm not going to be crossing myself, I'm not going to be down on myself if I do things in a different order. Um, and I think the reality is I'll probably pick books in between the TBR books to read from my new piles that I'm really excited for um, when I just need like a pick me up or whatever. But yeah, those are the books that I am um, thinking about getting to at least um, in the next couple of months. Do let me know in the comments down below what you are reading at the minute, um, and if you've read any of them, obviously let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you think about these TBR videos. I actually quite like them. Um, I think they're good for me to have a little bit of structure and a little bit of like guidance in what I do. Um, and like I've said this before, but like, the only reason I really stopped doing them before was because I got a zero by 16, so I got a zero TBR, so it was really pointless doing them because it was just repeating the, the haul essentially. Um, but yeah, so just chat about whatever you want in the comments. Um, I always find it really helpful to have comments, weirdly, like I know this sounds really silly, but like when I'm feeling rubbish, um, having little bits where people are talking to me on my phone, like it sounds really silly, it sounds really pathetic, but like it does help me and it does make me feel nice to know that you guys are interested in what I'm doing and in me sticking around a bit longer and all of those things. Um, so yeah, if you if you do want to leave a comment then um, it helps. So yeah, I'll see you soon in my next video and I'll chat to you again then. Alright, bye bye. Thank you.